Hi everyone, tonight it's Keto Pizza Night. I'm Anita from ketogenicwoman.com where I share keto and carnivore recipes, other cooking ideas. If you're new here, welcome. This is the channel where I share my recipes and my journey. I have so far lost over 125 pounds eating like this and I'm hoping to show you how to do that as well. For those of you who are coming back, welcome back. I hope you like today's video. Okay, so I'm making some keto pizzas. I'm, I'm actually doing maybe two or three different things depending on how far my uh, batter goes. I'm going to use the BBBE bread as my pizza crust. I just, even though I'm not doing BBBE this month, I like the bread because it only has four or five ingredients. It's the easiest one for me. You can use it on, you know, keto, carnivore, BBBE, whatever, just low carb. It's just easiest. And so that's going to be my pizza crust. I am doing ketovore this month. And so pretty much the only thing that's not animal based here is some herbs, like some Italian seasoning. That's it. Everything else. We've got eggs. We've got bacon, we've got some of the pizza will have cheese, some won't. Um, so we have a mix of things that I'm trying to use up from the fridge and I'll be telling you what they are as, as I get to them. So the first thing I'm going to do is start on my pizza crust. I'm going to do like a big pizza. I'm going to do it on, on this pan parchment and then if there's any leftover batter, I will go to that pan. I'm just not sure how far this will go because I've never made like this full sheet pizza before. So I'm gonna start there. I'm also going to be making um, kind of a bread pudding pizza. I used to make bread pudding all the time, but uh, it was because I made so many failed <laughs> breads. This time I have, I do have some more failed breads. Um, this actually is not, this is just a one perfectly good um, BBBE hot dog bun that I kind of forgot about. So that's going in. And these are um, just some experimental buns. There's no egg white powder in them. Um, I'm just, I'm running some experiments. I'm trying to come up with a different bread recipe that has no egg white powder in it. Um, these were, I mean, this is probably my fourth or fifth time making them, trying different things. These were a little dry, so I never got around. I mean, I ate some of them, but the rest are going into a bread pudding, which will be kind of a pizza type pudding. But you'll see that in a moment. So um, I want to get started with the pizza crust. I'm gonna turn my oven to 325. You have seen me make this dough many times before, so it'll all be speeded up. I will just run through quickly what's in it. So what is in it is these items here. Egg white powder, bone broth. So, uh, today I'm using garlic, uh, Redmond's garlic salt, and I'm using some Italian seasoning because after all, it is pizza. So the egg white powder is 42, or sorry, egg white powder is 42 grams. This is 30 grams, about a tablespoon and a quarter teaspoon. Then I've got 200 mils of the egg whites, like just uh, three fresh and three carton egg whites. You can do that however you like, fresh or carton. And I have three egg yolks in here to add at the end. So I've got everything set to go and I am going to start by turning on the oven and getting the egg whites going. So I'm going to pour my... <laughs> I'm just stirring up my dry ingredients so that they're well mixed. I'm going to, um, I'm gonna do it all together today. This is what I, this is what I normally do. If you have trouble getting your egg white or this BBBE batter to um, be big and fluffy enough to make buns or bread, you could try whipping up the egg whites by themselves and then adding in your dry ingredients. 
Um, I find I don't have to do that. I just do it all together at once. But um, that doesn't mean that everybody, you know, it really depends on the humidity in your kitchen and so on. So I'm gonna put this all together and just kind of stir it up a bit, just so I don't get a big poof in my face for the, from the powder. Okay, so I'm gonna run this for probably three to five minutes. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm going to add my egg yolks now, one at a time. One is broken, so it'll look like two egg yolks. Okay, that looks good. All right, so now that I'm looking at this, I'm thinking it's only going to make probably one pizza crust. Um, that's okay. Just gonna give it one more little stir here. All right, so I am just going to basically dump this on the big platter here and then smooth it out. And then I'll tell you all about the toppings that are going on it. I think this is just actually the right amount for a large pizza sheet. Okay, my oven is ready. It's 325. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let this bake for say about 10 minutes um, because it, you know, it's very, it's a very thin layer. I'll check on it um, and I, you know, I want it to partially bake before I start putting ingredients on it. So we'll see what it looks like in 10 minutes. Um, and while that's baking, we're gonna put together the pizza bread pudding. So just gonna get this going. So I'm just going to make this in a pie dish. Um, I'm gonna beat some eggs here. You could use some eggs and cream. I'm just gonna use eggs. And I'm gonna get my bread. So with, the, um, with these breads, normally I keep them in a, a bag like this, not sealed tight. If you seal it tight, it, they will get sticky. Even with the egg wash, they'll get a little bit goopy on the sides and stuff. So I like the texture the best when you know, I just kind of close it like that or, or leave a little gap in it so some air can get in. I'm sure there's probably a specialized container that does that, but um, yeah, this is, what, this is what I use. And three to four days on the counter, I don't put it in the fridge. And to me, that gives the best um, results, I guess. So I'm going to tear this up. So after three to four days, you basically, your, your choices are to um, freeze these for future use or make something out of them like I am here or throw them away. Um, they don't really, you know, they don't really taste that great. They get, they get even more dried out or sometimes they get more moist after three or four days. So. Today I've decided to make something. I haven't made a bread pudding in so long. Not since uh, last year when I was making a lot of protein sparing breads that were like <laughs> not good. They, uh, it took me a long time to get the hang of those. This has some rosemary garlic seasoning on it. So it, uh, That'll actually be good in, in this thing. So it's basically gonna be about the equivalent of four buns, I guess, because I'm gonna use this uh, BBBE bun as well. I think this is probably going to be enough. Okay, I'll save that one for something else. So, I'm gonna pour on the egg. It's almost like a it's gonna be like a baked kind of, almost like a frittata. Now what some people like to do with the bread pudding, and I, I do this sometimes, is 
pour on your batter, whether it's just eggs or eggs and cream, and you can leave it overnight in the fridge so that the bread really can soak up the liquid. Um, I should have done that last night, but I've done it both ways, and uh, it'll still it'll still work. I'm, 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 I'm not afraid. It'll be fine. So what I'm going to put on this one is this. This is leftovers from the other day. And it is a chorizo cream sauce that I made. So in it is uh, basically two ingredients, the chorizo, which of course is already seasoned and um, you know a little bit spicy. I don't just buy any old chorizo because I would have bad reactions to it. This one is um, made in store by a butcher shop that I go to. So it's gluten-free, sugar-free, MSG-free. Um, they, they have very clean, clean ingredients um, at this butcher store. Um, the cream I get is the Avalon cream. I don't know what you guys can buy in the States, but here in Canada, there's not that many choices for a cream that doesn't have the fillers and carrageenan and those sorts of things. Um, but luckily, I can get it at quite a few places around here. It's called Avalon Dairy Heavy Cream. And there's only one ingredient, and that's cream. So that's kind of nice. And I think uh, I had this actually over some of my BBBE noodles and it was really good. I think it's gonna be really good on here as well. The cream has kind of, uh, I'm gonna actually put this in the microwave for 30 seconds because the, the, it's like stiffened up into like a pate. I, I want it to be a little more spreadable. Okay, that's better. I can kind of spread this around a bit. This is, I think it's gonna be really good. It's gonna be kind of like sausage bread or something. This chorizo is so good. So if you, um, you know, want to buy some chorizo like this, it, it's, it's uh, pork that is, it's uncooked. It's not the kind you slice that's already cooked. It's uncooked, it's raw um, and, you know, they'll, on the package there should be a list of ingredients so you know you, you just want to watch that because in in some places it's going to have you know the extra ingredients like sugar and that sort of thing but if you look or ask your butcher what they have um, you can very likely get a nice clean one like this one is i'm really lucky to have butcher shops like that around So I'm just working the sausage into here. So this is not dairy free. There is, um, there is dairy in that because when I cooked the sausage, I just basically cooked it in a pan and I added a bit of that cream. And um, that's what we've got in here. And I'm just going to sprinkle it with just a little bit of Parmesan. This is freshly grated, not too much, maybe a couple of tablespoons only. And so that's going in there. Um, I'll, I don't know exactly how long this is gonna be in here. I just, I'll take it out when it's bubbly and the cheese has melted. Right. We've got our crust here. So what I am going to do now is I'm going to um, put some meat and cheese on it. I'm not going to use tomato sauce because tomato sauce for me, it just causes way too many issues. Um, some um, like acid reflux and things like that. Uh, you could, if, if you are, um, keto, you could also use some pesto, and I actually think I have some pesto in the fridge, so I could use that, um, but I think I'm just going to go with cheese and meats on here and see how that, see how that is. And I might even just have a section of just meat, we'll, we'll see. So let me 
tell you about the meat that I have here. I have some of my purse bacon, of course, and I'm going to crumble that up into some little chunks to put on there. Um, I usually from this same butcher, I can buy beef pepperoni, but they didn't have any when I went there um, to get my supplies. But they did have beef pepperoni sticks. So I bought a stick and I just kind of sliced it into thin slices. Again, the ingredients are super clean. And this is beef salami. So um, I'm just going to kind of slice it into some ribbons. I am going to go pretty light on the cheese, but I am going to add some cheese. Because uh, I'm not, I'm not not, like I'm, I'm trying to be, it's clean ketovore month for me. And I'm, so I am, you know, having other things um, besides, besides beef and, and bacon. Um, I'm allowing a little bit of dairy and a little bit of, of cheese. Well, cheese is dairy, but not a lot. And uh, no cheese snacks. Like I can't cut off a piece of cheese and have that as a snack. I'm, I'm only having either a boiled egg or bacon as a snack. That is it. There's no other snacks. So um, I think what I will do is just, uh, I'll start with this. I need a bit more bacon on there. Okay, so um, as an afterthought, I decided I would grab some of my kimchi. Um, because I'm trying to include a little bit of fermented food every day. So, um, and this will add just a little bit of interest to this pizza, I think. Just, kimchi is hot, <laughs> I find. So the only way that I can eat it is if I kind of like ration it out amongst whatever else I'm eating. So I will mix in a tablespoon, say, with a serving of shredded beef or chicken or pork. And I, I find that really nice. Um, but I don't want to get too much in a mouthful here, just, just enough. So there's about, it was about a half a cup that I've added to this whole thing. Okay. And you certainly don't have to do that. You can, you can add like maybe a, an Alfredo sauce, pesto sauce, tomato sauce if you're able to tolerate it. Um, yeah, whatever, you know, whatever you like. I'm trying to get away from, I'm trying to think outside the box on some of these things. And in the process, discovering new things that I like. So this is uh, the fresh grated Parmesan again. You know, that was about probably two tablespoons. Just enough to kind of give it that flavor. Oh, I did say I was gonna keep, keep a piece without cheese, but I guess I screwed that up. It's all gonna have cheese on it, but not too much. So I'm gonna go about the same here, two tablespoons. I think that's going to do it for the pizza. So um, I'm going to slide that back into the oven just for a few more minutes till the, the cheese is melty. We'll be right back when the pizza comes out of the oven. All right, we have pizza. Everything is hot and ready. The cheese is melted. It's not very much cheese, but I'm doing that on purpose. If you want to load up the cheese, this will probably um, take it over the top um, because I think everything else looks good. I'm just going to grab my other one. So there's the chorizo bread pudding. All right, let's see how these things are. I'm just going to move the pizza over to here so I can slice it. Or I'll just slice it right on the parchment paper. I don't think it matters. Ouch! <laughs> but that does. Hang on. There we go. Let's give this a try. OK, 
Okay, so what we have here is we have the BBBE crust. It is soft. It's, it's like a flat crust, but I can tell just by looking at it, it is soft. But you can still pick it up like a piece of pizza, so that's a good thing. So let's give this a try. Mm -hmm. That is really good, actually. I was worried that it was going to be a little bit dry without sauce, but it's actually not. The moisture from the different meats and the bacon and a little bit of kimchi, um, it has what it, it has what it needs. Mmm, that's a winner. Okay, I'll be enjoying that. I'll finish that later. Um, I want to take a look at this other one. So this one here is, it's more like a casserole. Um, I'm actually thinking I'm going to put it back in. So this was in f at 325. And normally I would bake something like this at 350, but I was kind of going with this one. So it was in at 325 for about 15 minutes. I'm actually gonna put it in a bit longer, um, but it's almost done, I can tell. And I am going to just give that a taste. Mm. The chorizo sausage is everything. I mean that that's amazing. It's, it's um, yeah. I'm I'm really I'm actually happy I didn't uh, freeze those failed buns and uh, made something pretty good out of them. Um, because it's all protein, like I made it with whey protein powder, so it's not dairy free. Well, there's cream in the sauce as well. Um, but very high protein, low carbs, few ingredients. That's always my goal. And tastes good too. So this is going to be my lunch, although I am going to bake that a bit longer. So I'll probably have an extra piece of pizza there. And uh, I hope you give it a try. Uh, sometimes these recipes with the very few ingredients, you know, can look a little bit different because you're not loading on the cheese and sauce and that sort of thing. But I think in the end, you know, our taste buds are changing as we, as we get older and as we filter out some of the ingredients that are just not working for us. And this is a perfect example of that because I think both these taste really good. And uh, I, I hope you give them a try. We'll see you on the next video. Snap. No, Mark. Sorry. Oh, I, don't, I can't decide whether I should put it all in together. That's what I usually do. I'm thinking. Oops. No, I can't get it out. Okay. Teddy's barking at something. Not very much cheese, but...